Hi everyone, I'm Josh and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about alignment today. So that means lining up your hands precisely. So a bad example of alignment, we're gonna take this Mozart Sonata in D major, K311. And there's this little part at the end that was given one of my students trouble. She was going kind of slowing down. It felt kind of clumsy. And so that would be bad alignment right there. The hands really aren't lining up. So if you slowed it down, it would sound something like this. It could be close and especially in faster speeds. Um, if you don't have a trained ear, sometimes it's a little harder to tell, but you can tell something's not right versus this. How do we get that um, really precisely lined up, the hands lined up exactly, especially when we're in fast speeds? The first concept that I want to present is the fact that listening is your best friend. A lot of people just expect their fingers to do it and they just want to drill it over and over and it's like, oh, if I can train my fingers to do it, then I don't even have to think about it. But Babayan uh, in lessons would always say, he's like, what is this? It's just a piece of meat. It is nothing without the brain controlling it or something like that. And it was really good to remember. And uh, my first teacher, Susan, she would say, um, people would say, don't your, don't your hands get tired? And she'd say, well, you don't play the piano with your hands, you play it with your mind. And um, people would always look at her kind of funny, she said, but I loved both of those uh, two different quotes from the, my, my two of my teachers. And um, it goes to show that if you are listening really carefully, so the first piece of advice, that's the first concept is, is listening carefully. The first piece of advice to help you listen more carefully is to close your eyes. When you take away one of your senses, immediately it heightens your other senses. So if you take away sight, it's gonna enhance your hearing and it's gonna enhance your touch, both of which are critical to alignment. So that's the first thing that I would do. The second piece of advice uh, along those same lines is of listening carefully. And by the way, listening trumps every other piece of, uh, every other concept that I'm going to apply and um, explain in this video. Listening is, absolutely critical at all points. And that's what's really going to guide your performances anyway. That's how you get better at pretty much every concept at the piano is listening more carefully. The next thing that I would do is have check mark points or checkpoints along the way that there. I remember I was playing this etude and Babayan had com uh, commented that my hands weren't perfectly lined up. I was like, He's like, can you not hear that that's unaligned? And I did it like 10 times for him and it all pretty much sounded the same to me. And he was like, that one was good. That one wasn't good. That was good. And I just realized that you can train your hearing to be so much more laser sharp if you work these things. So checkpoints along the way would be there, there. So finding the finger where the hands exactly line up is helpful. Now, if you're in this Mozart and every single note is lined up, having a checkpoint along the way, maybe every four notes, there, 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 that's really helpful. So, um, and you could even accent those when you're first starting out. Don't get into the habit of that because that can lead to really terrible textures overall, but um, you know, very beaded out vertical playing. But if I just think pinky, pinky and second finger, so pinky and thumb, pinky and second finger, that really helps me. Okay, uh, the next thing that I wanna talk about is rhythms. So just a basic long, short, long, short, and short, long, short, long. And even going slower on your long notes and really fast on your short notes. Try it just all loud. And then try it with really good voicing. 
keeping that left hand quieter. I have a bunch of videos on voicing if you need help with that, but uh, that is really good to kind of pound it out between the hands and then do really good voicing. And then I would do just the opposite, short, long, short, long, short, long. I generally like long, short, long, short better because you're always going into the next beat, but both of them are equally important. I've seen students only do long, short, long, short. And it doesn't yield as good of results as when they do both. And then another one that's very helpful, just a basic rhythm is long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long. So stopping again there and feeling that alignment really precisely. The other thing that I want you to do is, again, close your eyes and really just focus on the feel of those fingers hitting. I know this kind of looks a little psychotic what I'm doing right now, but um, what I'm doing is I'm really focusing on like visualizing those two hammers hitting the strings at the exact same moment. So closing your eyes kind of can help you visualize that. And I could even do that for every hammer. The other thing is just, and this kind of is like rhythms, just finding stopping points. So stop on the third note. Stop on the fifth note. Ah, I messed up. There we go. Stop on the seventh note. All right. It messes with your mind. You can see I just played a C natural. I haven't played that this entire time. I played this passage like, you know, 30 times now. So, and then once you've gone through all of those and you work on that for, you know, a week, um, your hands are going to start to feel much more aligned, you'll be much more in control. And then just go back to the old trusty finger staccato. That helps to keep textures light anyway, which is really critical in Mozart. You don't want this heavy um, molasses like, like thick texture. Hopefully that gives you some ideas for lining up the hands perfectly in fast textures especially, but this can be applied at any level, uh, you know, listening carefully, doing rhythms, visualizing those hammers hitting the strings at the exact same time. That can really take your playing to a new level. I just got out of about six hours of listening to piano juries. That's the end of the semester assessments for all the students at the university. And I can tell you, a lot of them could use this advice that I just gave. A lot of them had issues with alignment. And I think we all have issues with alignment. I mean, I even listened to some of my recordings and it's not huge. Um, there, there aren't huge issues with alignment in my recordings because I mostly worked those out, but there are parts where I'm really flying through a passage and I'm like, ooh, that got off just a little bit. Very, very minor. Most people may not notice it, but trained ears would. And those, those concepts are things that you want to continue to hone um, your skill level with. So continuously thinking about lining those hands up as precisely as possible so that it becomes second nature so that you can focus on your dynamics and your beautiful voicing and your expression when you're playing will really help. If any of you have any questions, let me know. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. I'll also leave a couple of links in the description below. Um, two of them will be uh, for my paid courses if you want to take your skills even deeper with a lot of in-detail repertoire and exercise videos. Um, one of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips, finger staccatos tip number one, but there's a lot of other ones in there too. Tip number 10 should actually help you guys a lot, uh, cycling and inserting gaps. That would help with this passage as well. And then finally, uh, a a link for all the gear that I use here in this studio and the gear that I find helpful um, to record with as well. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.